Welcome to Barrier Tower. This dungeon doesn't pose a challenge unless you have to perform a step manipulation, but you get no encounters uh, because of it, so it's still nice. Okay. This tile where Sessa talks with the party is an event tile, so you could use this to go from event to other steps if the situation arises. Let's say that you had to battle an extra goblin on the big boat, you could correct single steps with this and continue with the step manip. For a standard step route though, we only take 10 steps on this floor, so what I like to do is go to this wall and then go back to the submarine room to refresh the danger rate. And now we can start our ascent to uninterrupted. You can save here if you want, that room doesn't advance the dungeon raid either. But uh, this room does have random encounters and you want 10 steps here, so after climbing the stairs, go back to the bottom. That's 10 steps right there. And uh, also grab the chest for some easy accessible money to keep on fueling Giltos. There is no more step manip done until the 8th floor of the tower. You could make a case for setting up the smoke command on Bart's, uh, but everything here is easy to run away from. Except for the monsters in a box, uh, and you shouldn't touch that with a 10 foot pole anyway. <laughs> uh, for the 6th floor here, we take this chest, uh, not only for the money, 18 grand is nothing to scoff at, you also want uh, the extra steps from having to reach that chest. Then keep on climbing, we have another cutscene here, another event tile you could use. Uh, and uh, day floor, okay, here we take 4 steps, uh, so on the bottom left corner, we go to the bottom right corner, and then keep on advancing. And for the 9th floor we need 12 steps, so before entering the door, you sh should go back, touch the balcony, and uh, then keep on ascending. For the 10th floor, this is one of the very few save point rooms in the game that uh, do advance the dungeon raid. So, on this scenario, the save point counts as an event tile. Um, in order to do what a save point has to do. So, just something to watch out for here, you don't want to step on the save point unless you do some tricky things to correct uh, uh, going from single steps uh, because it has uh, an event tile on it. Um, before going inside, we want a couple of steps. And uh, here we use a visual reference. Uh, I use uh, the bottom of the stairs here, and then you need to go back to kill another encounter. And then take 8 steps, uh, make sure to avoid the save point because it's an event time and it messes up the step route. And then uh, now we can approach uh, Atomos. So I set up as Gilgamesh, there is no need to change anything. We did all our preparations back on the big boat. Okay. Atomos is one of the more rude bosses in the game. Um, the way he works is that he's got a crap load of agility and auto haste. And he's constantly checking for who is dead on your party. And uh, when somebody is dead, he starts uh, dragging them towards uh, himself. And when one of your party members reaches Atomos, they will get ejected from battle. They don't even die, they just disappear from battle and get erased from your menu until you finish an encounter. So if nobody is dead, what Atomos will do is instead spam Comet to make sure that somebody will die. And uh, this is a time magic spell that is. that just fluctuates in damage and can be really strong, it's more certainly going to kill somebody um, at this level. So, so for purposes of the speedrun, we kill somebody ahead of time, so we can control who Atomos drags, because uh, somebody dying here is inevitable, and uh, we have uh, our proper uh, party set up uh, this way. Now, the strat here is uh, having Faris take care of everything after uh, spamming uh, Dragon Power on her. First time we're going to use uh, Dragon Power. Um, you can scroll uh, through the inventory diagonally like this, because if you notice if I press right, that's just uh, how the inventory scrolls. So you can press left uh, to go to the previous slot this way instead of having to press uh, right uh, and up. But just a minor optimization here. Anyway, you want to combine Dragon Fan plus High Potion to result in Dragon Power. This boosts the level by 20. And then Faris wants to drink uh, the sp uh, speed drink. If you didn't have memory cursor on this uh, from the big boat, I kind of forgot to do that. Um, you will want to select this manually, but this uh, inflicts uh, haste when you drink it. And you also want Elena to guilt us for some cheap damage here. So after Dragon Power in, check out the damage that uh, Faris can do more than 3000 uh, compared to Lena. So yeah. Uh, we want to spend all our Dragon Fans here, make sure that you don't have any own inventory after leaving. Oh, and this is the worst case scenario. Fortunately, Atomos didn't hit Faris, which is uh, good for us, but had that hit Faris, 
Uh, what you want to do is uh, drink another speed drink to override the slow status element. Atomos can still do things even uh, while dragging, so we are not completely safe. We cannot guarantee your safety. Depending on how you have to correct that, you may need to drink another speed drink, but he didn't hit me, so I'm just going to yield us again. And um, here, when Lennon Storm comes up, ideally it's going to be queued up while Faris is attacking, so you will have to do this during the Giltos or the speed drink animations. But you want to put the Mithrin knife here onto the empty slot that the Dragon's Fang left behind. This is to set up um, uh, the Dragon Fang dupe that will happen on Exodus Castle a little easier. And then uh, defend. Yeah, there is no need to Giltos here, that was a mistake. Um, you just have to guild us once with Lena and then three times with Faris after Dragon Powering twice, and that will be enough uh, to kill Atomos. Uh, but I was a little distracted there. So, overall, fairly simple battle. We'll learn guild us with Lena, and also get a Dark Mother drop to combine a Death Potion later on in the speedrun. We will have to kill another thing with a uh, cheese. Uh, oh, something fun you can do here. Um, you can set up Galuf on the lead spawn on the party, and then uh, we're going to get another cutscene down here where um, um, Galuf is grieving for uh, Cesar, rest in peace Cesar, but um, you have a couple Galufs on the party because you have the lead from your main party and then uh, the Galuf is probably down there, so that's something fun you can do for marathons. Anyway, uh, I'm going to pause here because I want you to notice that internal timer on the bottom right. When that hits zero, the cutscene actually starts uh, progressing, but we can do something to make it go faster. Um, but first off, we need to do a menu here while waiting. Uh, Faris wants to go back uh, to Ninja, uh, so we can increase her agility a fair amount with the uh, speed boosting gear. So left, down, left, and we can reach Ninja easily this way. Then set up the escape command, because we will need this to flee from things on Guido escape and uh, optimize uh, for plus 4 agility, and now we can outpace uh, Bards, even though he has all that speed gear set up. And then Lena also goes uh, to Time Mage, uh, just uh, in preparation to cast the, the Exit spell in the next dungeon. But that is the first part of the setup. Uh, now, no, you can go back to the submarine and notice that the internal timer disappears this time, but if you go back out, it starts at 7 seconds instead of 14. So this is a speedrun strategy. When the cutscene starts, you want to go back into the submarine and then go back out to get an internal timer with a shorter countdown. And we can make this cutscene go faster that way. The depression hits hard though, but we don't have time for that. Leaving the barrier tower, we have to be at 179 total steps.